Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 5 of Photoshop for Photographers. And in this episode, we're going to talk about adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are over here on the right panel. They're these kind of little hieroglyph hieroglyphic icons over here. And if you just hover over one, they'll tell you what they are. So, you know, that's brightness, contrast, levels, curves, etc. If you don't see them here, go up to um, window and make sure adjustments is checked. If it isn't checked, you won't show. They won't show up over there. So check them and we have the uh, layer adjustments there. Also, you could access them down here at the very bottom. You have this circle that's kind of half white and half black. If you click on that, we have all the adjustment layers in there. We also have some fill layers in there too. So, But we're not going to be covering the fill layers today, just the adjustment layers. So that's uh, these adjustment layers. And what they do is they will they'll add a layer on top of your layer stack and you could do various adjustments that will adjust the whole uh, scene, the whole you know photograph. And the neat thing about them is they're non-destructive. They're not actually messing with the pixels on your image. They're just adding an adjustment above it. Um, okay, to get started, what I like to do is I like to fill the, the uh, work area with my, my photograph. And the quickest way to do that is hit Command or Control-0, and that will fill the work area with your photograph. The next thing I like to do, even though I mentioned that these don't mess with the pixels of your photograph, it's just a good habit to have is to duplicate the background. With a Mac, you hit Command-J, a PC, Control-J. I always do that. If I did a different type of adjustment that was destructive and I made a mistake, I could just take this layer and throw it in the garbage can and then I, di I didn't mess up my photograph at all. Okay, so just tick Command or Control J, it's a good habit to have. Now the first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to, well, to tell you, I'm going to make this a black and white shot eventually. What I'm going to do though first is I'm going to do Selective Color, which is the second last icon in this uh, group of 16 icons. And selective color I like using, it's, it's just to add some unusual, I could add an unusual color cast to this and that's what I want to do when I turn it into black and white. I think it enhances the black and white. Um, I don't have any presets for it. If you find you're using this a lot, selective color, and you're always doing the same exact thing, you could create a preset by going up here to this little flyout menu clicking here and you could save selective color preset. You could save it as a preset. Then when you go up here it'll be there so you could just quickly do it and get out of uh, this um, adjustment layer you'll be done. What I'm going to do, what I want to do is I make sure this is on neutrals. That will affect the entire photograph. If you had it on blacks or whites or cyans or anything like that it's only going to affect those um, colors. So I want it on neutrals. The next thing you'll notice is there's four sliders, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It's pretty simple. Is you move it to the right, you incre increase cyan. If you move it to the left, you decrease cy cyan. Now, as you can see, um, it's got red in when I go to the left. And it's kind of the opposite colors. The opposite of cyan is red, the opposite of magenta is green, the opposite of yellow is blue, and the opposite of black is white. So as you go less black, you get more white, right? One quick tip, if you have these somewhere and they're not in the middle and you want to put them back in the middle, the quickest way is just to double click on the name and you'll put the slider right back in the middle. Okay, so uh, an easy way to remember, you know, I ripped those off real quick, Real, real fast. It's cyan, opposite is red, magenta, green. Just remember R, G, B and remember and just think it's written over here. Red, green, blue. R, G, B and then of course white. So what I want to do is I'm not going to mess with cyan or red at all but I'm going to mess with magenta. Um, now that's going to affect green which is mainly going to be the grass down here. Now if I move it to the left I'm going to intensify the green. All right. If I move it to the right, because I'm putting less magenta in the shot, and to the right, I'm increasing the magenta. And I am going to move to the right. And the reason why is the magenta, I want more magenta in the shot. It enhances the greens and it will enhance the sky a little bit. And watch. Now, of course, it, it makes it kind of a, a garish looking color, but 
I'm not going to keep this a color shot. I'm converting it to black and white. So I don't really care if it doesn't look natural at this point. The next one is yellow that I'm going to mess with. Um, it, you know, as I go to the left, I'm, in, I'm taking away yellow so it intensifies the blues a little bit. Well, I'm going to move it just to the right a little bit and intensify the yellow because that intensifies the grass a little bit because there is yellows in this grass. Um, blacks I'm not going to mess with. And that's it. I'm done with the selective color adjustment layer. And as you could see, it added a layer on here. It says selective cover on the right. And if I hit this eyeball, I'm turning it off and turning it on so you could see what I did there okay so that is laying on top it didn't mess with any of these pixels if I don't like this I could just toss it in the garbage can and no harm is done All right now I'm gonna convert it to black and white with a black and white adjustment layer and that's this icon right here that's half black and half white now as soon as I click it it turns black and white I like using a preset to get close and then I mess with the sliders to get it um, more to my liking and um, typically what I like is now I won't like blue I hate the blue filter it will take away the sky totally a blue filter is like intense anything that's blue becomes way brighter anything that's opposite more opposite blue gets way darker so I don't care for that I don't care for those darker filters but you could go through these one by one and see what you like or don't like Generally speaking, on landscapes, I like the high contrast red filter. I like the red filter itself. I like the yellow filter sometimes. As you can see, some of these are very similar to each other. Um, I'm gonna for just for demonstration. I'm gonna use the infrared filter on this one. As you can see, it's you can't even look at it. It's so bright. But as I mentioned, this kind of gets me close to where I want. I kind of like what it did with the sky. So I just got to tone this part down here. And whenever you're doing this, you'll find that if you do landscapes with expansive parts of you know grass, green doesn't affect the shot as much as yellow. So we're going to bring yellows down. And you could see it, it brought those grasses down so you could look at them without burning your retina. Now the green, I'm going to bring down too. It's going to be a lot more subtle, see? But I'm going to bring it down quite a bit because it adds some contrast and some structure down in here when I mess with that. As you can see, watch when I bring it up. And I'm going to bring it down, see? So I want, I want this to be a little more, uh, have more contrast to it. And it kind of intensifies this path then. So I mess with the yellow a little more. You could just you know, go back and forth. Now uh, the cyan is going to mess with my sky a little bit. Bring it to the more towards the middle a little bit. It kind of gives a little more um, depth to the clouds. The blues, I might take that away just a little bit because if I go too you know too dark on the blues, it's going to make anything that was blue in the shot darker. All right, so we're just going to back that off just a little bit. Adds again, it seems to be adding a little more depth to the sky. Reds, I think there was some reds down in here. Yeah, it's kind of neat. See, as I go to the right, see, it kind of added a little more, like, again, some more, like, structure and depth to the shot. So I kind of like that. And magenta is going to affect the sky, I believe. It doesn't really affect much at all. So, all right, so I'm not going to mess with that. Okay, so I'm done with the black and white adjustment layer. Now I'm going to do one more layer, and I'm going to do curves. And you're familiar, I think, if you guys are familiar with Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw. Um, you know, you get this familiar diagonal line. And generally what I like to use curves for is to add contrast. And you could go to a preset. They have presets that come with it. Um, there's color negative. Isn't that kind of crazy? Um, color process, kind of, you know, still crazy, darker, increased contrast. One thing I'm going to show you real quick has nothing to do with this this shot. See this one right here, negative? See the line is opposite now? The line was going this way, now it's going this way, and I made a negative. If you guys have negatives laying around, you could scan them in your scanner, bring them into Photoshop, and you just go negative, and what will it will do it'll make it a positive even though you're putting a negative because your 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 scan is going to look like this right here 
As soon as you do negative, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to make it a positive. And then you could save it as a TIFF file or something, and you just created a, a, you know, a positive image from your negative. So if you have, have old negatives laying around, bring them into Photoshop, and you could scan them and do, use this. This adjustment layer, the black and white adjustment layer, and you could, or not, I'm sorry, the uh, <laughs> the curves adjustment layer, I apologize, and you could um, make them a, a negative, a positive. Okay, in this case, I want to increase contrast, so we could go here, and it makes what this kind of classic S curve is called right here, that subtle little S into the curve and it will increase the contrast. And it's okay what it did, but I kind of like messing with it myself. If you don't like where, if you're messing with these and you don't like, like where the points are, you could just grab one and just drag it right off. Look at that, just drag it right off. Just drag it right off. Isn't that something? So, you know, go back to the default even. It brings us back to where we were. Okay, I want to, I'll do it myself. So, what I do is you go into the upper quarter which is right where these two lines intersect and you just push up on that a little bit and it will make anything that's in the highlight area a little brighter. You go down right where these two lines intersect if you could see that in the video that's in the lower quarter and anything that's in the shadows I'm gonna make even a little darker so I'm gonna pull that down. I'll pull it down quite a bit. Okay and um, you can mess with it though you could um, where you bring these points, you know, bring it down, move it around, see if you could add just the amount you want, how you want it to balance the shot, how you see it in your mind's eye. You know, it might not appeal to everyone, but it's got to appeal to you. That's what matters. So a real quick deal, that's as close as I'm going to get it for now. I still think this is a little too dark up here, but that's my um, idea for the shot. But the neat thing now, I could go back to the selective color um, adjustment layer, double click on it and it will come back out and I could readjust these sliders um, so I could try to um, you know modify it a little more to my liking so I could move things around see you know whatever but you could just double you know you could, so you could go back uh, to black and white slider and I think my blues are a little too dark up there, so I could, you know, move this to the right a little bit. It helps that. So you got the idea? So this is adjustment layers in Photoshop. And, um, you know, it's really easy to do, and it's non-destructive. If you want to see, uh, one thing I'll add, these eyeballs too, they work just like a layer. You could turn them off by clicking the eyeball. Okay. And, um turn them back on by clicking the eyeball. So it's simple as that. So that's just an introduction, as I mentioned, to adjustment layers in Photoshop. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and it helps you. You could get this raw file if you want to practice on your own. Um, in the description, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have a link over to my website. You go over to my website and there'll be instructions there on how to download the file. And you're welcome to use it. And um, I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to my channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you did. And come over to my website and visit. I have a lot of articles and videos on Photoshop and Lightroom and Photoshop Elements. If you can't swing the $700, $800 for, for Photoshop or the $50 a month for Photoshop CC, um, I have, you know, Elements is, you know, what, 80 bucks, something like that, less than that. You could, um, get most of the functionality of Photoshop uh, using Photoshop Elements and I have training videos on my website for that as well. I also have critiques where I critique other people's work which is hugely popular. You can check that out as well. So I appreciate it again guys and I'll talk to you guys soon.